volunteer. So at this point, I will go ahead and call to order the Thursday, November 9, 2017 meeting of the City of Royal Oak Zoning Board of Appeals. The board does not write the zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant relief from it where practical difficulty or unnecessary, unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item following a public hearing. Use variants require a minimum of six affirmative votes in order to grant the requested variances. Non-use variance requests require a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant the variances. If you would like to request that the board table or adjourn your case due to the absence of a full board, which is the case this evening, we have seven out of nine members and they would need five out of seven affirmative votes in order to grant your request. You must inform the chairperson immediately following the public hearing. Petitioners shall do their best to limit their presentations to 10 minutes. Each participant in a public hearing shall do their best to limit their comments to three minutes, but there's nobody else out there, so that doesn't matter. Get rid of that. And we will move over to item B, which is the approval of the, oh, actually before we do that, we have a new member tonight. Miss mm -hmm. Amanda Page, <laughs> would you like to give yourself a quick introduction? You have fans in the audience. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, my name is Amanda Page. I'm a bankruptcy attorney and I have an office in Southfield and I represent consumers um, and bankruptcy actions in the federal court. Excellent, so, welcome. Yeah, thank you, and I'm very Absolutely. glad to be here. She was also on the DDA. Yeah, I was on the oh, DDA. Right? Okay. Yeah, I was on the DDA for, oh my gosh, two years, three years. Okay. Broke my leg in the middle there, so it was kind of a, yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We anyway. don't have any, uh, any old business, so I will move us right along to item D1 of new business, which is case number one. Wait, 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 wait. We've got to like, approve the minutes. minutes. Oh, I'll make sorry. a motion to I'm approve sorry. the minutes. I'm just moving too fast. Support. <laughs> any corrections, additions, deletions? Not seeing any, I will call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The minutes are approved. And again, uh, we have no old business. So that moves us along to item D1 of new business, case number 171140 public hearing on the appeal of Susan and Edward Blisnick, owners, and the Levine Group petitioner for the following variance. Wave 10 feet of the minimum required 60 foot lot width for a corner lot to permit land division to create two vacant buildable lots located at 233 Inglewood Avenue. Mr. Murphy. This property is located on Inglewood at the intersection of Glendale. And as you can tell from the aerial photograph for any site visit, uh, the adjacent portion is an unimproved section, 50 foot wide section of Glendale Avenue. So it's closed at its midpoint. It's not open to through traffic. Still, an op it's still a public right of way by city standards. It's never been vacated. It's just completely unimproved. And the petition, because it's a corner lot, because it's public right of way, we recognize it as a corner lot. And the city commission does have the ability to modify that public right away in any way that they see fit in the future. So for the purposes of making an open roadway or sidewalks or any variety of things that they so choose to do, unless they have a request to vacate it, which at that point in time they would uh, consider their options. But the subject property is composed of two 50 foot wide platted lots and the petitioner is proposing to raise all the structures on site and revert back to the original plat, two 50 foot wide lots to make two vacant buildable lots. The interior lot, which is the westernmost lot, meets the minimum lot size for an interior lot, but the east eastern lot is considered a corner lot due to the adjacency of the public right-of-way, the Glendale Avenue. And as such, it needs to meet the minimum corner lot width of 50 feet. As the board may, may well know, there's a provision in the ordinance which allows us to review, staff to review, the other corner lots on the block. And if the lot that's being created is the same size or larger than the majority, then that's something that we can administratively approve. And you'll see in the aerial photograph on the screen in front of you, highlighted the current lot dimensions of the other adjacent lots at that intersection. There's one other 50 foot wide lot. You'll see some correspondence in the packet uh, between our office and the petitioner which highlights the recent history of, as you can see in the aerial photograph, 301 Englewood, so the lot adjacent to uh, the subject property, and that was split in error. That should have been a 60-foot wide lot, and instead it was created at three 52-foot wide lots. So you'll see some correspondence, and, and that was some confusion in the past. Uh, obviously that was done in error, and. Uh, 
noted to the petitioner that in fact they would need to meet that 60 foot provision, but the petitioner has provided some information that they feel would uh, help their case in terms of the hardship. So they've got provided some items in writing. There's some photographs there as well. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, they, again, they are seeking a waiver of 10 feet from that minimum 60 foot standard. Any questions for staff at this point? Well, the only obvious one I have, uh, yes, sorry. Yes, sir. The only obvious one is, do you know of any plan in the near future of actually uh, paving of that? City road? Commission hasn't taken any action. Uh, they've they've considered some some thoughts, but no, they haven't taken any action or provide or given direction to staff to move in one per particular direction or another. And no one, oh, oh sorry. sorry, and no one's explored vacating that alley in the past? No. It's something that we've discussed uh, with the petitioner. If, in fact, it, it was vacated, and I'll just zoom in on that portion, highlight it a little better for clar clarity. This is the portion of Glendale Avenue that's unimproved. It could, at the request, be, uh, the city commission could be asked to vacate it. You are correct in that it's a 50-foot wide right-of-way. Each adjacent property, so the subject property as well as the one next door, would receive equal shares, 25 feet. If they together separately sold it to someone else as two 25-foot pieces and made another 50, it would be an interior lot and it would meet the minimum lot size standard for a buildable lot. Now, one would have to research whether there were any utilities in that right away right now that would need to be moved or would, would prohibit in some fashion making it an actual buildable lot, but dimensionally it would meet the standards, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, not seeing any. The floor is yours, ma'am. Please introduce yourself. <clears throat> My name is Lisa Robinson. I'm the attorney for Petitioner Susan Bluznick. Her husband passed away in March. And um, we made the application. I have a, I, I did a drawing I want to pass out. Can I, so yes. she owns the property? Yes, she's the owner. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Oh, no, you can absolutely, you yep. can hand those around. Just give you want to hand those to Ms. Hook and she'll hand them all the way around. Them all out. There should be more than one. Um, basically, I agree with everything you said. We've got two originally platted lots, lot 14 and lot 15 from the original plat and the undeveloped right of way to the east of the east lot. Continuing east, you have the three now 52-foot lots that were originally two 78-foot lots that were split into three 52-feet lot and developed in 2005. They put up three beautiful houses, and they did not, uh, when they went to do their permits the and their lot split, the planning department approved them without enforcing the requirement for a 60-foot lot for a corner, and I can only imagine that that was because it's not really a corner because there's no road there. Um, across the street to the south, you have a 50-foot lot, and to the kitty corner, I think it's 78. Yes. Uh, in fact, when I originally went to the planning department to do the lot split, I was told, oh, that's two 50-foot lots, that should be fine. I went downstairs, I went back to my office, and then I got an email saying, oh, you know what, we, it's a corner. I'm like, really, okay. So I looked at the ordinance. The ordinance defines a corner as adjacent to, a, to having a street. So I think there's some room for interpretation because there's no street there, but we, um, that it is what it is. And then I, re I requested, how did they get to do it on the other side with the 52-foot, because they're not, they're not 60 feet. And um, they had to do the research, and it took many weeks, but eventually it came out that they didn't get a variance because it had been missed for one reason or another, and nobody could remember why, because it was in 2005, which I understand. And um, the one other thing I want to say, well, I have a few things to say. <laughs> the next thing I want to say is that um, it really, we're, we're seeking to go, the corner requirement is a 60-foot lot, but as Mr. Murphy said, the requirement is that it has to be at least as big as the majority of lots on that corner. So we've got a 50-foot across the street, a 52 on the corner, and the 78. So really, if we were 52 feet, I mean, if, yeah, if we, were 50, if we were two feet bigger, we wouldn't be needing this variance. 
but he said you can't call it a two-foot variance because of the priority of which statute comes first. I haven't been able that's to pin. Really, excuse me, that's not really true, right? If it, no, it, it is was 52, true. they'd still need a variance. One no, day. we wouldn't. No. Because we'd meet the, we would not need a variance if we had two extra feet. The requirement, because you have, you would have, the majority of lots would, would be, we'd be as big as the majority of lots, which are the 50 and the 52. And if we were 52, then there'd be no variance needed. There would be no variance needed for the corner lot. Then that would right. make the interior there's lot a, 48 a, feet, and there would be right. a variance needed for that. So I, I kind of, you know, I didn't want to quibble, but I don't think we really need a 10-foot variance. I think we need a 2-foot variance, but that's just quibbling with words. I'm not going to push that. But the, um, okay. I think I said all that. We were told that we would either need to apply for a variance or uh, vacate the right of way. Wait, can I, Joe? Yeah. Why isn't this a two-foot variance, son? Yeah, good question. The ordinance states that an, any new corner lot needs to be 60 feet wide, and that says unless it's able to meet that particular provision. It's unable to meet that particular provision, so it defaults to the standard of oh. 60. But we, we do have the ability, should we choose to tonight, to change that? Yes, to consider so all the... versus a 10? It would be a, would be a potential compromise in this case, which would still allow them to do that. You wouldn't be granting them a waiver of two feet. They still need the the waiver of ten. ten. If you want to, I'll say, think of it in that fashion, uh, or Feel better look when we at go it. Home. The, yes, that's fine. But okay. but technically, the variance is ten like feet. That. If you want to think of it in that sense, yeah. sure. Okay. I mean, I I don't think it really. You know, it doesn't matter, but it does technically say, I've got the ordinance right here. It says a corner lot shall not be less than 60 feet in width unless otherwise modified by 770-21B. And then you go to 770-21B on the next page, and it says the zoning administrator shall determine the pros lots are the same size or larger than the majority, 50% or more, which on a four-corner lot is two would be 50% or three of the developed lots. So... That's how it goes. It's the it's like a unless otherwise modified. So it's kind of open. And I asked Mr. Murphy, where does it say that that it, you know to to, uh, to to defend his position? But he he didn't point anything out. But I still you know it's it's a question of ordinance interpretation, I guess. Anyway, I think if we had the two foot variance, we would def if we had the two extra feet, we wouldn't be here. We we're, we agree on that. Okay. So, and I, I, I explored the vacating the right of way because to me, I'm, a, I'm a, a real estate person and I always say, oh, more land is better. So we could try and do that. And I, I went over and I talked to the man in the 52 foot lot that's on the other side. He was not interested and the, the, he would have to you know, agree because it, it, you, you apply and I didn't want to pursue it with him. He said that, the, that people um, crossed through there and he said that he didn't want the responsibility to mow and he didn't want the extra land. So that was not an option for us. So that's why we're here today for this variance. And I also, um, I did speak with Mr. Murphy, and I, I don't know the status of this, but he told me that there was some talk at the city commission of um, building a sidewalk, putting in a sidewalk. He said that they had already gone to the engineering department to look into putting in a sidewalk, which would mean there would never would be a street there, and it would be a, actually a lovely um, addition to the neighborhood, I think, because... It doesn't. It looks a little weird now when you have that threshold on the concrete and then grass, and the street doesn't go there. So I think that would be an excellent solution. And I hope I haven't heard any more about it. I don't know if anyone has. Okay. So we don't know what's happening with that, but it would. That would be an option. And that's the only thing that I've heard that they were considering. Um, if they. If, Obviously, if they're never going to build a street there, then it would never be a corner, and we wouldn't also wouldn't have this issue today. Um, the other thing that I found out from the planning department was that there is not a single situation like this in the whole city of Royal Oak. This is the only situation where you have an undeveloped right of way with a lot, a double lot, you know, two lots next to it. So this would be a unique situation. So those are the facts, and now I want to um, just go through your criteria for deciding a. A variance application. The first is, I'm sure you all know, is a unique exceptional conditions. Obviously, I just said this is a unique, this really is an exceptional condition. 
and it would result in a peculiar or exceptional practical difficulties or undue hardship on the owner of such property. The hardship would be that she wouldn't be able to sell it or develop it in the two platted lots, I guess. So the, um, and that it would be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. I don't think there would be any detriment. I think it would be a benefit to the public good. I think it would improve the neighborhood and it would improve the, um, you know, the tax receipts and the, and it would be a, an improvement for sure. Um, without substantially impairing the intent and purpose of the chapter, chapter. I think that what happened was that the, this subdivision was platted before the requirement for the 60 foot lot on the corner was enacted, which I used to know the date. I think it was maybe, maybe Mr. Murphy knows, maybe in the 70s, and this was platted before that. And so it's definitely a unique situation, and there's no other situation like it, and it would not be a detriment to the public good, so I think we're okay there. Then we must show that if the ordinance is applied strictly, practical difficulties would result to the applicant, and that all four of the following requirements are met. One is the restriction unreasonably prevents the owner from using the property for a permitted purpose. Uh, to build two single family homes is a permitted purpose. She would not be permitted to do that without the lot split. Um, the second is that a variance would do substantial justice to the applicant as well as to the other property owners in the district and a lesser a relaxation than requested would not give substantial relief to the owner or be more consistent with justice to the other property owners. And I, and I um, given the facts of the case where the neighbor was allowed to build without getting a variance and to turn a turn two 78 foot lots into three 52 foot lots, I think it would be an injustice to, to us. It would be unfair not to extend that courtesy to, to, to us, but um, and I think that would be just to grant the variance. And I think it would be consistent with the, given the justice that was given to the neighbor on the other side. And um, also given the fact that there's not even, it's not really a corner in the fact that there's not a street there, she doesn't have the benefit of putting in a side car, a side entry garage. If you were on a corner, you'd have a side with a street on it. She doesn't have that. And, um, and also that the ordinance defines a corner as having a street on the side. And I think there's some room for an argument that there's really not a street on there. So it's really, it's kind of a quote, it's a corner in quotes. It's not like a true corner. So in fairness and justice, I think we have to keep an open mind about that. And that the plight of the, the next one is that the plight of the owner is not due to this, um, the plight of the owner is due to the unique circumstances of the property. I think we already said that it's a unique circumstance. If it wasn't considered a corner, then we wouldn't have to have a variance because they're two fully originally platted 50-foot lots, which, it, which is big enough for the neighborhood. And that has not been created by the applicant or any person that has an interest. We didn't create this situation. It's um, definitely not in created by Mrs. Blisnick. And then the board shall consider the width, size, and general character of the lots in the neighborhood and the area. And that's where I did my drawing because I wanted to show you how many 50-foot lots are in the area. All the orange ones are 50-foot lots. And um, you can see us, we're the pink, the two lots, and then the, red, the right away is my little red, and then the blue is the, um, the, the three lots that were divided. So I counted, I think there were about 120 50-foot uh, lots in the area and about 40 larger lots, mostly in that one quadrant there, and that I think that a 50-foot uh, two 50-foot lots would conform with the character of the neighborhood looking at the if you drive through the neighborhood You can see that there's many many houses on 50-foot lots Especially looking up and down Glendale Avenue, which is where she's on the corner of there are like I think 12 uh, 50-foot lots there and then there's one two like four that aren't 50-foot lots. So out of the 16 or 18 lots Yeah, 18 12 would be 50-foot lots then the next is the that the um, Width and shape of the lot leaves adequate buildable area that's totally buildable. It's within the normal range of the neighborhood and it's buildable according, you know, according to the uh, building department requirements. I don't think there's an issue there. The extent, the last one is the extent to which the other developed lots in the area have maintained the required width. I think that we've already gone over that, that there are many 50 foot <coughs> lots in the area and it would be, it would, it would, it would fit in with the neighborhood. It's not, we're not asking for a tiny little lot it's a, it's the right. In fact, on this, um, in the subdivision, there are lots that are smaller. There are 47s and 45s that are, I, I colored them orange, but they're smaller than 50 foot lots. So that's my whole spiel. Um, I don't know if you have any questions for me.
And actually, before we start with any questions, I'll just ask you the most important question. As we see, we are short two people. Yeah, that's so what I was going to ask you about. So you do, you you do about. need five out of seven <coughs> affirmative votes. We can certainly hold this over until next month if you prefer, or we can move forward. It's 100% well, your choice. Well, of course, I'd rather move forward. Can I get, a, like, a, a temporary show of hands so I can decide? The <laughs> 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 not voting person. <laughs> oh, there's only, wait, one, two, three, four. So there's seven of you. I have to get five of you? Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you guys think? <laughs> okay, and I was just want to, if there are any other, so this was going to be my question. If um, I don't know what to do on that, if I need the other two or not, I guess maybe you guys could discuss it and, and tell me, give me some advice. But I just wanted to sum up and say that I think it would be an, a terrific addition to the neighborhood, definitely be an improvement. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but it would look lovely. The three houses that they built on the 52s look really nice. They're beautiful. And... Um, it would, and I also want to say that Mrs. Bliznick is widowed and disabled, and it would be this is the only asset she has, and so it would be a hardship. And I, I'm asking you to please grant our variance application. Very good. And as there is no uh, are no audience members, Mrs. Bliznick, did you have anything that you wanted to add or? No. Okay, so I will go ahead and open and close the public hearing. And again. How does this work? Do you? Uh, Vote like right now? Or do you well, like no, no. I mean, we're going to discuss it. And we're going to hash it all out before we go through all that. This is at the point where you need to decide whether or not you'd prefer that we hold it over till we have a full board, or. I, mean, I feel like it's a really compelling case. It's a terrific opportunity for two beautiful new homes, and I'm hoping you all agree with me. So I guess I'm going to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, there's, there's no certainty that next month. We have a full board either. Oh, really? Yeah. Could have. Or the other two or might not like you. Yeah, it's snowing, I swear to God. Okay, so That's not helping your case. <laughs> We've got to decide. Okay, so you want us to move forward? Yes, I do. You got it, absolutely. All right, so I'll bring it back to this side of the table for any discussion or questions for staff. Or Yes, sir. First off, she made a claim that there was talk about putting a sidewalk in there. Joseph, do you know anything about that claim? Yes, the city commission has discussed it, and okay. they asked the engineering staff to review it. They're putting sidewalks everywhere. I know. I understand. <laughs> he hasn't but, heard that. But there's a... Walkable. Right, I hadn't heard that. Um, my comments, and I'm, I'm a little torn. Uh, I know this is a very unique circumstance. <laughs> However, there is always the possibility of that road could go in the future. And in looking at the requirements for how we look at these things. Uh, I have to disagree with with uh, 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 their point about the alleged hardship not created because they have a, a, a house on a lot right now. They don't have to split it. They're just wanting to split it. I understand for financial, but this isn't about financial. This is about following the zoning. Um, I do agree that the hardship of splitting it in this circumstance where there's not a road, but we have to still hold it towards the road because of the future of road that is a unique hardship, so that's why I'm a little torn on, uh, on this. So I'm looking forward to other people's thoughts. Any other input? We'll start yeah. at the end with Vizukin. Um, she, she made a point I found very interesting. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, you're going. Right. Sorry, I was facing away from you. I didn't know your hand was up too. She made a point I thought was very interesting, and I grew up on a corner, so I'm very familiar with you know corners. And of course, there was always a street next to my house, by the way. But um, so they have the disadvantage right now of the fact that. There's a road there, and you can't get closer. But they also have the disadvantage that the city never developed this road. Because as she made the comment, when you live on a corner, you put your garage out of the side, and it saves you yard space. So in a way, they've also had a disadvantage to their owning their property for as many years as they've owned it, in that the city didn't put the road through that's supposed to be there. Not to say that weighs it either way, but it's, it's another thought in just, you know, how we have to look at things and how you make a decision. Uh, the road should have been there. You can see a cut in the fence, and you can see that people have been walking between the streets. So putting a sidewalk straight down the middle of that doesn't actually make a lot of sense because it's being used right now as a thoroughfare by people. Um, so I, I could see that there's even a lot of logic in the city putting a sidewalk in there, and I'm guessing if they did it, they'd put it right down the middle. They wouldn't put it as if a road was there. Of course, I guess that's presuming people think really hard before they put something in. <laughs> um, but, and yeah, I've been on the zoning board a while, and 
this might be the oddest one. Yeah. You know, because I remember when I first looked just at the Google Earth and it called it a corner lot, it was like, wait a minute, there's supposed to be a road if it's a corner lot. And I do understand that, yeah, the city still owns the property and it is supposed to be a road, but they've owned that property a long time and they haven't done anything. It's almost like you're being punished because they forgot to put the road in. Mm -hmm. You got no benefits, but you're getting kicked. Well, and to follow up on your point, one thing I did once, I put the pieces of the puzzle together like you did because I was looking for the corner as well. And, you know, is there a plan to pave that road? So I went back to the dedicated road millage that the city passed a number of years back, and I went through the 10-year plan to see if there's any plan to pave it, and there's not. So if it was on the city's radar, you would think it would have fallen under that plan, and it's just not there. You did all that, huh? I That's did. pretty good. <laughs> That's why I get the big bucks. Ms. Zuka. Okay, as to the speculation that there might be a road there someday, it's also possible that a new person could buy the house on the other side and they would agree to the vacation request. Um, and if that happens, then we don't have a corner. So there's too much speculation here. Right now, I don't see it as a corner. I see that the it meets the minimum area requirements. It's got 7,100 square feet. Um, it needs 6,000. It's got the depth requirement. It's just missing that front piece if it's a corner. And I think this is really unique in it, and it warrants our consideration for the variance. Who's saying that I see over here first? Well, I was just going to make an observation, too, that, you know, will this road ever be extended? I know it's speculation, but in reality, it would dead end at Edmond anyways. It's not going to connect any further to the north. So for all the points that were just mentioned, I'll make a motion to approve this variance. Uh, even even if I look to, you mentioned the four corners, but as you go to the south, every corner lot due south of your lot, 213 and beyond is 50 feet wide. So I think the addition of two new homes on that street would be a, would be welcome. Uh, I'll support that. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Any additional oh, discussion? I'd like to make Mr. something Mueller. only in a, in a question here. Okay, so you apparently have to have both neighbors want to have something vacated and they each get half. If the other guy doesn't want half, yeah, can't oh. the one person ask for it to be vacated and get it all? Yeah. Because I'd sure be going for that. It would make, yeah, s it make sense. So okay, that's even sort of odd, because if one guy doesn't want it, why shouldn't yeah. the other person be able to get it? Because they have vacated. to want to vacate it first. Yeah. Well, it sounds like the guy didn't want to vacate it because he didn't want to pick up anything he has yeah. to mow. But the city has to. Does the city have... Uh, does the city mow this? <laughs> the Google <-er>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while? Okay, so they haven't even been maintaining it real well then. No. <laughs> yeah, I question that too. Is it the people walk dogs, and, 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 and um, like um, Mr. Clapp said, Edmund, you couldn't put a, a strip street straight through there anyway because it would dead end at Edmund around the block. Ms. Page, I think I Yeah, I have a mind. question. Um, so, what? How far did you look into vacating that? Like, what process? Well, what is the, the process? The application for the uh -huh. for the vacation that has a place for the neighbors to sign. Okay. So I walked around and nobody wanted to do this. It was there were people who were resistant and I didn't seem to have the neighborhood support. Okay. That was my first option because, like I say, I'm a property person. I'm like, ooh, more property. Yeah. And I like your idea. We'd take the whole thing if he doesn't want it. But um, they, um, I mean. I like that idea. <laughs> so the process for vacating is essentially the neighbors all have to agree to it? Well, it seemed like that. So I, I dropped it because it, that's yeah, the first thing. It has a true. list of, you know, lines true. for people to sign. So I is, walked around with my Isn't there computer. a litigation where you can file a lawsuit in the court to vacate the property as well? I'm not familiar, but okay. probably if we wanted to really push it. Okay, I think it's a simple um, court action. Okay. Mr. Kroll. I'll, I will... I have supported it, and I will be supporting this. Um, a couple, a couple things. I, I saw a couple of hardships. I, I saw one definite hardship that um, knocking down that house and building two nice new houses would certainly be an asset to the neighborhood. So certainly not only to her, but as well as the, the neighborhood. Um, I, I almost put the the uniqueness of the land in more of a like more of a city confusion kind of hardship because um, it's pretty obvious nobody knows what they want to do with it and. Probably the chance of anything ever happening to it unless somebody aggressively goes after it is nil. So I, it's it, parts of me said, why is this even here in front of us when there were some decisions that could have been made elsewhere? But then again, um, I, I think 10 feet in this particular situation 
um, is, is certainly doable, so I'll be supporting it. Any other comments? All right, not seeing any, I will go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. And Bill, we'll keep you guys vacating uh, it right away. Yeah. I would just, I mean, you get more land for it, yeah. <laughs> Ms. Page, did you vote yes or no? I'm sorry. No. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> so it was 6-1, is that correct? Yeah. All right, very good. Motion passes. Thank you both. Thank you. All right, do we have any other business? Then at uh, barely 7.30, we're looking for the mystery motion. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion? I'll support. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned.